full of wonder our God Yahweh
do better than that. Give him a praise and honor. Be praised. Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Welcome to Dove Church. Again, we get this opportunity to brag on Jesus, and we thank you for tuning in. We thank you for those that listen to us faithfully and share in through your giving and prayers and love, and we appreciate you. We appreciate the people of this house, the church, the members of this house that serve faithfully. And we thank God for you, for all those people that come together to make these proceedings uh, possible. We appreciate you, our sound team, our worship team, our musicians, and, and everybody that comes together to, to do this work. We appreciate you. And we thank God for his goodness toward us. Amen? Amen. And we are glad about this day, just this Sunday before Thanksgiving, and we have much to thank God for. He's been good, and good is not quite all there is that he's been. He's been better than good to us. Amen? And so we thank him, and we bless him. And as usual, we're going to move right into the word. Everybody with your Bibles in your hand, repeating after me, good voice. Everybody should have a paper Bible. The scriptures are going to come on screen. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you and we bless you. And we declare that you are Lord above lords. And there is nobody like you. So, God, we claim that revelation knowledge would flow forth and that this people would have ears to hear. We rebuke everything on assignment to stop the word, that it will go forth with free course and change not only our life but our very being. So, God, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We want to talk today from the subject, there's a stranger in town. There's a stranger in town. There's a stranger in town. In our last lesson entitled, Float On, we find Paul, along with 275 other persons, surviving a few, a, a cruel storm and shipwreck. Just bringing you up from last week's lesson to this one. The centurion in charge by the name of Julius gave these instructions as the ship was wrecked. Those who could swim should jump overboard first and get to land. And the rest, some on boards and some on parts of the ship. Here is the outcome. And so it was, they all escaped safely to land. As Paul had been told by an angel, and he shared it with 
everybody on board. We will all be safe. So it's good to know in the midst of a storm that you're going to be safe. The Lord has sent a word. Don't worry. It's going to be all right. Amen. The island that they washed up on was unknown to them, but it had a name. It was called Malta. The island was inhabited by what the scripture says were natives. And when I looked up the name native, that was a kind word for barbarians. Anybody that was outside of Greek or Roman culture uh, that didn't have the refinement and the philosophical training and all of those things were considered barbarians. And, and they were barbarians because they didn't move to the same beat. They didn't operate with the same culture. But there was something different about them. These natives had no knowledge of Paul or the world outside of their island. They had no knowledge. But in this story today we see the grace and the wonderful wonderments of God, how he wants to, to, to pursue and get his plan out. He don't care if you don't know about nothing else. When it's time for you to know him, he makes a way for you to know him. So no situation is away from him or too distant from him that he can't reach in and find you. He don't care whether you're in the backwoods of Tennessee or the UP of Michigan. He can find you and get a word to you. With no phone, no iPad, no computer, no internet, he can get a word to you. Somebody come pulling up with some dogs and a sleigh to make sure you get it. Amen. Amen. Well, again, these natives had no knowledge of Paul or his work. But it's interesting what Acts 28 and 2 says. Acts 28 and 2, turn there. Acts 28 and 2. When you have it, say amen. Does it start with and the natives? If, if you're there, it says that. <laughs> and the natives showed us the barbarians. I'm just going to throw that in. Showed us unusual kindness. They were barbarians, but they were kind. For they kindled a fire and made us all welcome. Because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. They knew how to extend an arm of welcome. But yet the scripture says Luke called them natives or barbarians. Sometimes I, it, it, that, that brought me to a sidebar and it, it, that you have to be careful how you perceive Because some people you think will, won't. Because you looked on the outside and you labeled them barbarians. We have to be careful because sometimes if people don't look like us, they're they not quite there. The truth is you just got there. At this point, in this, this introduction to the lesson, I cannot help but take, take a sidebar away to somewhere else too. At times, we wonder what God is up to, allowing us to go through various situations into storms, shipwrecks, floating in the sea on board a broken piece of the ship, and then landing on an unknown island. They could have been hostile. 
But they weren't. Because that's not what God wanted to deliver you to. Well, I believe that Paul was in possession of a prophetic word. And this prophetic word was playing out so he had to get to this island. Remember, he was on his way to Rome, which will be his final leg of his third missionary journey. It would be the place where he would be beheaded. It would be the place that he would spend his final two concentrated years of ministry under house arrest. But he hadn't gotten there yet. So in the meantime, there is a Malta. Because God does not change his assignment on you. So anywhere, if the ship get towed up, you're still under assignment. If the storm comes, you're still under assignment. We think we have a reason to stop because a storm blew in. And we offer God the excuse that I'm in a storm. He already knows about the storm, but he's equipped you for it. Because you're in assignment and you can't die until the assignment is over. No, 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 you're not there. You, you, we, we fall out at every little thing because we think that's the end when, when you're still breathing. So that man, his word over you is still active. Come on, come on. It's still active. Stop holding up your excuses to the Lord as if he's, he's blind and he doesn't see you. It's the same Paul who had an issue that he carried with him throughout his ministry. He had a thorn in the flesh. He said, he said three times I asked you to remove it. And God didn't. But what he did say was greater, but you got to live to get to that. My grace is sufficient. That means I'm able to allow you to function with it. Oh, God. Let me come over here. Because something you think you can't function without until they go and then you figure it out. I, I mean, you know I'm right about that. It gets gone and you figure it out. And you start functioning around because you're still under assignment. Look at somebody behind the mask. They can't see your mouth moving, but tell them you're under assignment. Move your eyebrows while you talk. You're under assignment. And I don't care how much hell you go through. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you. You're still under assignment. When it don't act right, when it's tore up, when you're depressed, when you're down, you're still under assignment. So I'm just telling you, walk on out of the fog, you'll be all right. Because you'll end up in another situation that might just be the plan of God for your life. You understand? Me? Somebody needed to get that today. You need to get all of that. Stop holding your excuses up to God, but hold up your intent to do his will. I'm going to do your will. Oh, yeah, I know what this is. I know it came to stop me. <laughs> it even came to make me cuss. <laughs> cuss, fight, and kill. But, I <laughs> but I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to do your will. Anybody felt like any of them things? <laughs> Amen. But God is good because he kept you. So put your hands in your pocket, behind your back. <laughs> Amen. Paul was, was in, in possession of a prophetic word. And it's a prophetic word that Jesus gave before he left the planet to go sit beside the Father. But he left the church moving and operating. So he left a word, an active prophetic word over the church. And, and, and Paul was privy to it. He might not have heard Jesus say it, but he might have heard the, 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 one of the disciples that was with Jesus. Luke was accompanying him, and he encountered the disciples along his missionary journeys after his call uh, 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 on the Damascus Road. So, so he had heard something, and, and this is one of the things he heard, Matthew 24 and 14.
And this word is still active over you today. Matthew 24 and 14. When you have a say, man. And it says there, and this gospel, is that what it says? Yes. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached, will be preached. Everybody say, will be preached. In all the world as a witness to all the nations. And here is the good thing. And then the end will come. How is it prophetic? That anytime God calls you and he selects Christians and, and he saves you. This prophetic word is not only active over ministers but active over Christians. And it says and this gospel, gospel will be preached into all. All the world, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world. That means out of the way places will hear it. So how did that get to our lesson? Where Paul ended up was a place that was out of the way, but it was a part of the world that needed to hear the gospel. Malta. And it took a shipwreck to deliver Paul to Malta. Sometimes the situation of your life are delivering you to a situation that in the plan of God so that this gospel of the kingdom can be preached. And the end won't come until every person on earth has heard it. I don't care how remote. I don't care if they're in a cave under the ground. Or if they're in a mountain surrounded by ice, this gospel is going to be preached. He can't judge us by what we don't hear. <laughs> and you will hear it. And you will know it. Amen? Amen? So here we find Paul under prophetic destiny. And and, and, and so this word got to those people of Malta. Well, back to the introduction. <laughs> While Paul was stoking the fire in this cold and the rain, they had made provision for him, but they were still kind of in a, in a kind of outdoor situation. There was a snake in the wood, a viper. And, it, and it, it, it reached, it lunged forward, and it bit Paul. The viper, it, it, when I looked up vipers, it, 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 the, this particular one on that island, and Malta is still there, is, 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 is deadly poisonous. So the barbarians or the, 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 the indigenous people, I'll say it, that's a little better than barbarians because they were kind. They, they stood by and they watched Paul after they saw the snake bite him. They were looking to see him swell up and die. And he didn't die. And you know, some people don't know any better. If something like that happened to you, you are God. And that's what they thought he was, was a God. But see, what God was doing was setting Paul up as a God to them so Paul could tell them who really was God. Isn't it marvelous how God does that stuff? Say, say you, you believe that. It's just like the story I told you about all of the, the monuments that were set up to the unknown God. Paul worked with that. He said, yeah, we serve the same God, but let me tell you who he is. Your, your unknown God is my God. And this is what he's done. So with these indigenous people, he, he, he says, you can call me God, but I'm, it's going to get real clear to you in a minute. Amen. 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 
So through the supernatural, Paul, God made Paul acceptable to the people so he could do no wrong to him. Oh, we got to treat him different. No, no. We got to treat him different. I, I just had a flash. If they were cannibals, they probably, we're not going to eat this one. <laughs> Say, come on back, Pastor. <laughs> so he had their favor, which is what, 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 what God is operating with, 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 with favor. Paul did not care about them thinking he was a God, but, but, but they, they, they noticed him, and he had their favor. And they treated him differently. Because Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, just jotted down, says, To everything there is a season. And there is a time to every purpose. Why did I throw that in? Because there is a time of favor. Somebody said, favor not fair. Well, because if you're looking at somebody else's favor and wondering what happened to you, that's when it doesn't look fair. But I believe in every life there is some favorable times when God comes through and blesses out of nowhere, does some supernatural, some wild thing, give you a breakthrough, allow something, bring something to you that you didn't expect. So in that time and in that season, that's your season of favor. And you don't have one. If I would talk to you, you've had many. You try to overlook them. But your favor may not be like anybody else's. Amen. Anybody knew when you were in favor? Seems like stuff was just going right. You know when you're not in favor. <laughs> How many know when you're not in favor? Sometimes you say stuff like this. I can't even buy a blessing. <laughs> Out of faith. Everything that's wrong is going wrong. Whew. Acts 28 and 7. We, we see Paul chasing his purpose. Pursuing this prophetic word. Following the intent of God in the earth. To make himself known. Presenting salvation to folk. And he does it through supernatural activity. You need to know that there's something different about this God. So the scripture says in that region. Are you there? There was an estate of the leading citizen of the island. Wow. So we thought it was just all barbarians or natives or indigenous people. But then on that island, Rome was already there. Whose name was Publius. Who received us and entertained us courteously for three days. Paul was in favor. After a 14-day storm and ordeal, you get on an island where some natives treat you nice for three days, and then you find out that there is a good Roman that, that, that found that you had favor with the natives, and you end up having favor with this, 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 this citizen of Rome who happens to be a ruler on that island. Somebody say, plan of God. God is the one that promotes you and brings you before great people. Let him do it. So, know this, that after the storm, after the shipwreck, after the trouble, and even after your encounter with something deadly will come a season of relief and replenishment. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some of y'all caught that and you said amen. 
after all of that stuff will come a season of relief and replenishment. What does replenishment mean? It means the, the fact that re is there means that something will be restored. Replenish me what the storm took out of you. What swimming on in the sea took out of you. What floating on a piece of the board trying to get safe took out of you. What being in the rain took out of you. What being a, a, a snake bitten took out of you. He said, I'm going to put it all back. It's a season of faith. Relief and amen. How many of you could just rejoice over a season? Hey, hey. Oh, y'all not ready for this today. A season of relief. Don't sit here and act like you got it all together and all cool. And, and, and every time we talk, you're telling me something that went wrong. No, no, you need relief. Turn to somebody and say, get you some relief. God. And replenish me. Let God put it back. Because God is in the re-re business. <laughs> Are y'all with me today? He won't hit me. David knew about it. David knew about God's re-re business. He said he restores. Come on, come on, come on. Re-re. I need some re-re right now. Put it back. I need some relief, and then I, I need a time of peace. Your life is not spent going through from one hellish situation to the next. He has promised to give his beloved's rest. And I'm not talking about eternal rest in peace. I'm talking about rest. I want God to catch a break. You don't have to deliver me from nothing right now. I'm all right. You think that's all God good for. <laughs> but he's good in peace. <laughs> Let me savor your goodness. Let me savor your loving kindness. Let me wallow in your grace. No, I don't need to know... That you are just a deliverer. I know that you are the God of grace. Yes. And peace. Yes. Come on. Anybody out there know? Yes. Anybody ever got to a place where you just blessed? You got blessed. You know, bless, getting blessed is a high. Yes. 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 <laughs> you get blessed. Your everything feel better. Yes. Your back start hurting. you. Your knee feel better. You can suddenly breathe where you was squirting for asthma. You, 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 when you get blessed, you, you feel better. No, y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Let somebody give you some money. What, when you couldn't jump, you jump then. You, you, you feel better. That's better than drugs. Oh, I... He restores. But it's good to know we can get a re -re relief and replenish. <laughs> that should be in your notes. Relief and replenish. Write, write this down. I am due a season of relief and replenish. I'm due it. Start believing for it. I know you can get me out of trouble, but you're still a God of peace. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Part of your testimony should be, I've known some peace in my life. I've known some victory. And I've known times where I traveled by Peaceful waters. Because <laughs> after he restores your soul, he leads you by 
Come on. Somebody ought to get this today. Oh, it's nice to have a troubled water testimony, but it's nice to have a still water one too. <laughs> Anybody want that testimony? I'm not in trouble, God, because you kept me out. Still water. What happened to Paul with this Roman is that he had favor. He had favor. And this is not just any favor, but we're going to start out with what is favor. We're going to put it on the screen. Thank you, Helene, for putting that up. That's good. That's good, girl. Favor, to be given advantage for success. That's what favor is. When folk don't like you, your government, another nationality, another race don't like you, God will give you the advantage for success in spite of all of that. That's how good he is. He will give you the advantage for success. They don't know why they picked you. They didn't pick you. They don't know why they gave you the contract. You shut up. You know. Just bless me. And don't act up. Don't go in ready to act up on people because you might destroy the favor chemistry that's about to happen. God just may be ready to surprise you. You're going back to the store to clown because they didn't do you right. And then they turn around and say, just keep it. Yeah. Don't cut up. You're on a favor train. <laughs> Am I helping anybody? <laughs> See, we get ready to get in the gruff because we've been mistreated. Favor is given the advantage for success. Say amen, somebody. Is that good to anybody but me? Let's go to the next one. To be favored. To be favored, regarded or treated with favor. Since you know what favor is. To get the advantage for success. Regarded or treated with favor, provided with advantages. But what I was trying to get to while we expanded that a little bit. Specially privileged. Especially privileged. Why do they always get to the break? They special? No. They in favor. And it's divine favor. It's from God. And don't get jealous. Don't act up on them. Just notice that if you live right, you'll walk into faith. Psalm 5 and 12. I'm going to tell you how you stay in favor. This is it right here. Turn to it. Psalm 5 and 12. When you have a say amen, not enough of you say it, amen. Psalm 5 and 12. And it says, does it say for you? For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. Let's stop right there. You, he will do what with the righteous? It's, it's key to be right, y'all. And not your righteousness, but godly righteousness. Don't keep trying to push your own stuff like it's always right, and it's not. It's got to be God's righteousness. That means a lie is just that, a lie. The truth is just that, it's the truth. No matter how it does not fit your paradigm or fit your thinking, it's still the truth. 
This is a plastic glass with some water and a lemon slice in it. Now the lie would be that this is this is crystal. <laughs> that that would be a lie. When you know it's not crystal because I, I can bend it. And break it. It's a lie. If it look like a lie, walk like a lie, smell like a lie, it'll never be the truth. And the funny thing about a lie is you'll constantly have to support it to keep it being a lie. You have to add to it. It's crystal with a stem. It was made in Austria. No, it wasn't. It was made in a plant in Pontiac. <laughs> Come on, y'all, help me. Don't mess with me today. Help me a little bit. <laughs> like some of the sparkling stuff people buy, and they say, you, you know this is real. You know 2,000 years from now, it still won't be real. <laughs> Let me finish reading the rest of this. Let me, let me say the first part of that scripture again. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. And it says there, with favor. Everybody say, with favor. Amen. You will surround him as with a shield. Come on, that's good. Y'all ought to meditate on that. All His favor will surround you like a shield. So that you'll have favor in any direction that things come at you. On your right side, your left, your front, and your back. You will have favor surrounding you. Somebody ought to give God a praise. That's good to know. That I can have favor like a sheep. My God. If you are a born again child of God, the scripture is talking about you. The Bible tells us, and I'm zooming ahead, in 2 Corinthians 5.21, just write it down. That because of Jesus' sacrifice, we have been made the righteousness of God in him. So the righteousness that you operate is not yours, but it's his. Because I can be righteously wrong. But I need Jesus' righteousness. This glass still work a little bit. After I broke it. Thank you. I'm not going to squeeze this one. I told y'all I wasn't crystal. <laughs> For, the blood of Jesus, we've been made right. Amen. Amen. The barrier separation that once existed between us because of sin has been done away with and we have obtained right standing with our Heavenly Father. So when the Bible declares that the Lord will bless the righteous with favor, it means to you and me. It's yours. Just think about it. God wants to give you special privileges. Special privilege. Supernatural favor. God's supernatural favor flowing in your life is not based on your background. Thank you, Jesus. Your looks. Your personality. His favor is based on the word of God and believing what it says about you. Oh, my God. Not based on all the stuff that you want to give it credit. It's not based on your intellect. My God. 
When you believe and activate your faith for God's favor, it will work for you. Somebody holler, activate. Activate. Somebody may not like your personality and still bless you. I can't stand them. I don't know why I'm doing this. And under your breath, you mother friend. It's faith. They tried not to hire you, and the person they were going to get the job to didn't show up. And there you stand. They still going to come on in. They, they invite you on in to the job if they had to. Come on. <laughs> Faith. The cost of everything can go as high as it want to go. Yeah. But we have a word over us, a favorable word. You are my daily. He didn't say, if the costs get too high, <laughs> I might have to change my mind. <laughs> y'all better get happy over that. Because y'all grumbling now, you complaining. Some of you going to have turkey leg and not <laughs> going to have chicken leg and not turkey leg. <laughs> no, you're not. You're going to get a turkey. <laughs> Cook it like you normally do. Carve that rascal up and eat it. <laughs> and feel like Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> Why, this is the most expensive bed I've ever had in my life. And it's simply delicious. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Or get you a chicken breast and pretend. <laughs> see, see, I'm on the page that my God shall supply. Oh. Come on, come on, y'all. y'all. When y'all gonna stop playing and believe God for what he said? All of your needs according to. All you need is a transfer. Okay, God, you know. Download. <laughs> <laughs> download today <laughs> transfer down <laughs> and when he supplies the need and supplies the money don't get crazy and say I'm not going to pay that for that when you just asked him for it oh I got to help us think right too I ain't going to pay that for that that's too and I know why one of my elders is laughing at her Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I didn't even know this was in there, and it had her name on it, but it, it, it ended up in here. Activating faith. I'm going to give you three things to activate faith, and then I'm going to move into, finish this story out. Is this a blessing to anybody yet? Amen. Number one, make sure you are helping someone else and showing favor to them. You always want favor, but be, be favorable yourself. Come on. Come on. Help somebody else besides helping yourself. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. So if he tells you to do something, don't, don't get upset. He owns it all. He's able to, to replace it. Uh, replace Re, re, re. Relief. Reproduce. Make sure you are helping someone else and showing favor to them. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. That's the cycle of giving. Make it happen for somebody. Two, plant a seed, be it finances, friendship, time, or any other area. The seed leaves your hand, but never leaves your life. Whew. 
plant a seed. It leaves your hand, but it never leaves your life. Come on, you got to know that. It's not in your life because it, 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 it never left your hand. My God. Three. Favored people have favored dispositions. Get happy. And find out who will notice you. Stop looking like a tragedy. And maybe you will attract some favor. Your personality, God can make you a favor magnet. Look like it's all right. Smile. Don't let the devil snatch your disposition. And make you bitter and grimace because of what you're going through. And it's real. It's something to, to, to frown over. But you're going to knock him in the face because you say, you can't take my smile off my face. I'm still, uh, hey. Walk around like it's all together. See, some of you want to track, track, track sympathy. But sympathy don't pay the bills. The worse I look, the more they'll feel sorry for me. Well, after they feel sorry for you, they're going to get them to go home. I want to be so attractive till you want to give me something. No, I don't know why I'm doing this. I saw you sitting over there. It had happened to me over and over again. I'm sitting somewhere. And sometimes I go in and I do this. I say, somebody going to pay for my lunch today. And I sit there until it happened. And five hours later, no. Uh, <laughs> I, I couldn't resist, y'all. I just... Do you know it has happened more than it, it has not happened? They'll just come, I, you, somebody cross, and, and the person will leave. And they say, they pay for, for your work. And I say, you know, and you know what? I get crazy. And I look at the waitress. I say, they did. I say, girl, you got a tip coming so good, it's crazy. <laughs> and I leave a tip second and none there. And then my family gets surprised when they, when they know my name. I paid them to know my name. <laughs> so when I come in, while everybody waiting, they'll wink at me, hold on. Oh, I shouldn't tell you, that's not right. Is it? Well, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, I, I'll call you in, 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 the wait is 30 minutes, and two minutes later my phone go off. Your table is waiting. I say, favor. So you see, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But it's because of your disposition, you have a favorable one. You, you intend to bless people. And I know a lot of service people don't make a lot of money. I don't, I don't put it on my charge card. If I, if I debit my, my bill, I'll take the tip out. I'll, I'll have it in my pocket in cash and i give it to them. Because I don't know what the, the big house, the company going to do. I, I want to give it to the one that served me. And the one that will remember me when I come back. Come on, come on, come on. See, favor is as favor does. I don't expect to always be blessed without being a blessing. Are y'all there? Favorable people are blessing people. Wow. Favor begets favor. 
Favor begets favor. Remember, it's a seed. Favor begets favor. Psalms 35, 27, pastor's just going to rush on. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. And let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Who favors my righteous cause. When you favor God's righteous call, you shout continually, God is righteous. I intend to do right. That's when the Lord is magnified. Who has pleasure, say pleasure, in the prosperity of his servant. God enjoys bestowing favor on you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, that's a blessing place. He enjoys bestowing favor on you. When he gives you something, he want to make you happy. Well, that's why when you give somebody something, the spirit in your giving ought to be the same way. You ought to, you ought to be happy to give it to somebody. You ought not give it to them and get mad afterward. I just gave my good shoes away. I just gave my... God. You, and you got an attitude the rest of the day. They ain't even walking in them right. <laughs> and when you give somebody something, don't, don't constantly come up to them. You know them some cute shoes. <laughs> Let go. Let it go. Favor opened the door for Paul to do what he did best. What God called him to do. For preachers, sometimes before we can do what we do best, God has to open the door and make us favorably received so that it can be a blessing. Acts 28, 8 through 10, and I'm almost through. I started to tell you, turn to somebody and say, he's almost through. But you better not say it. <laughs> Acts 28, 8 through 10. And it opens with some of my favorite biblical lines. One of my favorite biblical lines. Two of them. And it happened and it came to pass. In this case it say, and it happened. Are y'all there? Yeah. Did it say, and it happened? And it happened that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery. Paul went in and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and healed him. Come on, hallelujah. Because he had favor, he had entree, he had entertained him. So when this man had an, had an emergency, he trusted Paul, he called him. Paul did what Paul was able to do. So when this was done, the rest of those on the island, everybody said, the rest of those. Rest of those. But before it said the rest of those, it said when this was done, what was done? They saw Publius' father healed. Up, he's healed. When this was done, the rest of those. The whole island, the rest of those who had diseases also came and were healed. They also honored us many in many ways. That means as they were healed, they blessed Paul. Come on. What did Paul do? Luke, when I looked it up, when it said diseases, it said they became medics. Not taking first aid training only. They became medics for the whole island. Turned it into a hospital. With the healing power of Jesus Christ. And they stayed there for three years. On their way to Rome. 
healing. Now, you know, after they got healed, Paul was talking to them. You know, I, I can see Brother Paul now. You know, I was rock, walking along on the Damascus Road. And I had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, he was riding his beast. And, and I saw a great light. And, 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 and the Lord spoke to me. And changed me. And I was persecutor of the Jews. I killed many. I held a coat while they stoned Stephen. But he changed me. And he healed me of blight. Two ways, physically and spiritually. Now that same Jesus who they crucified is now both Lord and Savior. Paul talked to them. He healed them. Three years he stayed on that island. And they minister to his needs and make sure he had everything that he needed. And this all was being done as he was on his way to die. Your mission isn't over till it's over. There's a stranger in town. There's a stranger in town. And he looks like no one that I've ever seen before. My former pastor wrote the words to this song. And he's given sight. He's given sight to the blind. There's a stranger in town. There's a stranger in town. And he's given sight to the blind. Now it might have been Paul but the one who did it. The words continue to say in the song, his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And in 2021, he's still giving sight to the blind. Giving sight to the blind. There's a stranger in town There's a stranger in town And he, he's given sight to the blind And he looks like, and he looks like no one that I've ever seen before. And he, he given sight to the blind. And he looks, and he looks like no one that I've ever seen before. And he, he's given sign, yeah, to the blind. 
There's a stranger in town. There's a stranger in town. There's a stranger in town. And he's, he's giving sight to the blind. God bless you today. And he looks like no one that I've ever seen before. And he, he's given sight to the blind. Blessings to you. There's a stranger in town. There's a stranger in town. And he, come on, y'all. that they finally met. Father, we thank you for this day. And we bless you today. Ooh, thank you, God. Thank you showed up in our life one day looking like something we never saw before. And you ransom us and redeemed us. Thank you, Lord. Bless in this house in Jesus' name. Bless every listener in Jesus' name. Save the lost in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together and give the Lord a good call. Praise the Lord to all of our viewers. We thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.